Hey guys, what's happening? Johnny Gluck here. Um, pay attention to my social media. Yesterday I dropped a video on, excuse me, man, this is the worst. <clears throat> when I articulate, sometimes I get a little rough in my throat there, but back to business. Um, and, and also, have you ever tried to get the glare out of a vinyl banner? It's horrifying. Anyway. Um, okay, so yesterday I put up a bunch of detailed pictures of these trigger shoes. Um, the Johnny Glock metal flat base trigger shoe. It is adjustable with a set screw in the back. I put those pictures up because if I even try to get close to these phone cameras, uh, they just don't want to cooperate. Um, nonetheless, when I do start showing some of these, uh, you know, beautiful guns off, when I do come in a little bit closer, you are able to see, uh, a lot of articulation within the trigger shoe body. So, um, yeah, this is going to have an educational element to it as well, because you know how I am about education and explain a few things about trigger shoes because a trigger shoe can only get you so far. All right. Um, you know, the only thing with this trigger shoe is going to get you much farther or further, um, whatever the right grammar is. But still, here we go. Uh, the story, because everyone wants to know the story. Uh, February, I started a conversation, correspondence with the CFO of Ranger Proof Swag. And um, he said, look, I wanna, I wanna put out a new trigger shoe and uh, I want it to be the best trigger shoe on the market. And I said, call the right guy, buddy. <laughs> so anyway, we started this correspondence and it's it's taken this long, which things like this take this long and they take a lot of money too. So everything goes out to it. Andy Bell is his name, okay? Uh, from Ranger Proof Swag. He's a stand-up guy. If any of you have dealt with him, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, you can't get any better salt of the earth, this guy. So we teamed up with uh, Optimum Manufacturing. They're called uh, a great company. Uh, you might see them on social media too. I've tagged them a lot on my stuff. And that's the genesis of this trigger shoe. Um, a couple things about it specifically that I and Andy and everyone on board wanted, everything is American made in it, period, point blank, end of story. All American made. Um, that's a huge one for us. Uh, uh, along with that, all the parts that we are using are all quality uh, parts like stainless steel, say stainless to the point where you try to pick it up with a magnet and it won't pick up. The fact that uh, in the safety trigger safety tab right here, it is like I said, you can't see this when it comes up, but you if you look in the videos, you can see it's a hex wrench uh, opening right there. So for this, you can take the trigger safety tab out. That is one of the Achilles heels of these shoes. This is one of those areas where the spring will give out or something like that. And, you know, and the carbon builds up in there too. And that's something you'll want to clean. So figured if we had accessibility to that very easily, you can't punch a pin out while, you're, while your trigger's in your gun. You know, basically you can take that out, put it back in and clean it uh, without any fault, which is an awesome, uh, you know, uh, innovation for that. Also, with this shoe, and it's pretty much, I think it's maybe one of the only ones, uh, you know, flat face shoes on the market, pardon me, that have a adjustable set screw in the back for over travel because the pre-travels in these are set. This is where people get into trouble. They try to remove too much pre-travel and in that quest, uh, they end up making the gun unsafe. And that was one of the primary concerns and things that we addressed with this shoe is safety, because you guys know that's my, I hang my hat on safety, and functionality. So, and the aesthetics, I mean, come on, this, this, you saw the, it's a gorgeous shoe. It's absolutely beautiful. Andy had to do with the aesthetics. He's the one that did that. I did the functional and safety and Optimum did the manufacturing. So basically, or does the manufacturing. Um, and it's quality control, which is, uh, which is awesome. So basically, um, trigger shoes. They, I see these on Facebook all the time. Hey, what shoe do you have in your gun? What's, or no, not even shoe. What's the best trigger? People will say Ghost is the best trigger. People will say Dusex Machina. People will say Hi. You know, there's a bunch of different answers. And the fact is, like, a lot of those answers are kind of misleading because it's not a trigger. It's just a trigger shoe. Everyone's asking me, are you going to sell these as just a shoe? And the answer is no. If I do sell them 
it will be a shoe and bar combination. I might sell the shoe to people that already own my kit because the problem is that a shoe stand alone, like I said, can only do so much. The thing with this shoe is we've done as much as we can within the parameters of being safe and being performance. Now, um, if you follow me, you know I don't pull punches. I'm transparent as it gets. When I make a statement, a definitive statement, I've done my research and it's based on experience. And I will tell you this, this trigger shoe is without a doubt the most performance flat face trigger shoe on the market currently. And I'm sure it will be the most performance shoe in the future as well, um, just because of the way we designed it and all the tweaks and stuff that go into it. It's kind of like the, you know, the Gen 5. A lot of people say, oh, they changed this and that. And they're, they're just looking at the, at the exterior things. It's really the functionality of the inside of Gen 5 that makes it shine. All kind of different engineering changes. And that's kind of what is going on here. Um, and I'll explain that once I get a gun in my hand. I don't want to get too long-winded. Um, so basically, a trigger shoe can only get you so far. Uh, the, the, the main parameters are pre-travel and over-travel. A shoe is not going to give you a lighter break. That happens with other components, and that's dependent on what the application is. So that's why, you know, when I'm selling these in my combat and competition kits, it is actually, and I have these parts here, just so you can see, there's so much that goes into these trigger bars. These are just not polished, you know what I mean? Even the polishing is a four process, uh, you know, four step process. But there are proprietary cuts to the radius. There are proprietary cuts to the sear. There are proprietary cuts to the vertical extension, okay? Mix that with all the other processes that we do for longevity and whatnot, and this is a crucial part of a trigger setup, a system. Also, along with that, you have your housing, which houses what is called the connector. Um, this has several bearing edges that need to be addressed, not to mention the face of it so that we have glide and not drag. That's primarily what we're looking for with all these parts is to maximize bearing edges and smoothness when these are running together and at the same time, eliminate drag. Along with that, with my systems, you know I offer a striker, which is intimately tied to a striker-fired weapon. And so therefore, the interfacing of the sear and the striker lug face, let's see if I can get that in there for you, if it stay in focus, pulls it back and drops it. These two surfaces are very, very important, especially in a striker-fired weapon. Okay, so... There's trigger shoes, there's trigger kits. A kit and a system are kind of the same. The only the main difference in my systems is they're they're application specific. So it's not like when you get one, you're on your own. Like hey, you got to dial this in. I already have it dialed in for you. They drop in like Tony Hawk. There might be a little small adjustment here and there you have to make, but that's usually with the competition kits because I'm driving them to be so performance. Uh, as far as safety is concerned, that's a no brainer right there. That's taken care of. Um, so let's get into this, uh, explain a little about shoe, you know, the main, and you see this on my website, it says reliable, predictable, safe. Um, you know, I only can only use like three words. I didn't want to overkill it, but you know, nice, but, um, consistent and efficient are two of the big words when you add those two together, when you add those three together. So you know, someone might say, oh, I have the best trigger. The best is such a generic term, I would not even use that word. It's, it's just ridiculous. So basically what I'm going to tell you is the systems that I build are the most efficient. They are built on efficiency. Um, and with that is the action and with that is the feel. So if you have uh, a half an inch of wasted movement with your trigger control, with your trigger action, that's going to slow you down. That's going to uh, put more human error into the scenario, and thereby it's not, quote, efficient. I don't care. Uh, like, it's the guys, if you see a guy at the range shooting tea and saucer, you know, cup, whatever that is, you're kind of like, dang, that dude, he needs to step it up. You know, we're, we're thumbs forward now. You know, you're behind, the, you're behind the curve if you're not doing that. It's the, almost the same thing with, you know, with the trigger. Like, there is efficiency, and there is just dumb. You know, so basically, that is 
the thinking behind these triggers. Make them the most efficient you can. Make them the most consistent you can. Of course, they have to be reliable. Of course, they have to be predictable and safety. All these tie together to make an innovative, infallible trigger kit that is, and I said I wouldn't say it, the best on the market. <laughs> anyway, no, I'm just saying. Uh, so, but that, that's it. You know, I mean, I really uh, want to drive that home. Those are the tenants that these these kits are built upon, um, and that's why I offer them as a kit and not just a shoe because there are reasons for that. Because I want to control every aspect of metal on metal, and you can't do that with just a shoe. And if you're paying upwards of three hundred dollars for a kit, you better drop that thing in, and it better be an aha moment. And that's what I'm trying to create for you guys. So, um, and I don't do buyer's remorse. Trust me. Uh, read the reviews. Anyway, enough about me. So let's get to some of these in the guns. So basically, like I said, I have two um, variants, you could say. Uh, there's, because they are, it's the same thing with efficiency. They're, you're either carrying this gun or you're not. You're either competing with this gun or you're not. And it, you probably shouldn't mix the two or you should compete with your carry gun like an IDPA. You know, you understand what I'm saying? And the reason is, Every time you pull a competition gun, whether it be out of retention or whether it be out of a box or off a table, you are shooting that gun. You don't need the same insurances and assurances with that, uh, I don't even know what the word be, with that process or whatever that you would with the carry gun that there's a million different things, scenarios that could happen and you need to have a strong wall. You might not pull the trigger. Like I said, if you can understand how I'm wrapping my head around that, you're either carrying the gun for, the, you're using it for defense or you're using it for competition. It's one of the two. So with that in mind, like I said, they're both, say, I hate this where people say, oh, it's a competition gun. It doesn't have to be a safe. That's bullshit, man. If you, if you have, a, think of all the people in competitions, you drop a gun and the trigger goes off at a competition, it's going to be a bad day too. You know what I mean? So you are accountable for whatever you put in your gun. And this attitude of, uh, you know, there's a whole new culture now. They're looking these, they're, it's guns are like accessories. You know what I mean? Hey, look how, and I get it. Like, oh, look how cool my gun. I used to say for better, for worse. It's starting to turn for worse. You know what I mean? So that's why I really, you know, push this stuff on my channel of education and my social media outlets because it is a big deal. These aren't accessories. It's not like, hey, dude, check out my new, you know, that's not what they are. These are weapons for protection or if you're in a shooting sports you know exactly what I'm talking about. Don't fuck around. Make sure your stuff is safe and don't push the thresholds on it. Put everyone else at risk. Okay, enough lecturing. Uh, so there's the, and I'm going to pull some of these guns out. These are, this is a company I just started working with, Zafari Precision. I'll bring that up. The, I can't say enough about the fit, the finish, um, the quality. I'm running these guns just to torture test them and the, and the porting and Everything about them, man. They dropped it. They, they went together just like totally. Everything about them is absolutely beautiful. So Zafari Precision, they are out of Clearwater, right up Largo, actually, specifically. And it's about 45 minutes away from me, which is awesome. Uh, the other person, of course, is uh, Chris from Loki Tactical. I have him doing all my stippling and framework. He's actually on my website uh, pertaining to that. This is his new uh, texture here called the Swamp Goat, which is fucking awesome for Florida. This way, this gun just does not move. I like more aggressive textures like this. They're awesome. Um, okay, so now that I've uh, told you about those guys, <laughs> uh, the trigger. So let's do the combat models first. And you know what? I see a lot of uh, guys give you know complete guns to gun reviewers to review. I have three different guns here that I'm going to show you how things can add up to be a little bit different in each gun. So I'm staying as transparent as possible when you say, Hey, it doesn't look like that gun. The tactical toolbox pulled the trigger on. It's like, yeah, because that was fixed up a certain way. So it was insanely tight and all that stuff. Uh, that does not happen with every Glock that you drop every trigger into. And I'm going to show you how, but there's just small nuances that unless you're Robert Vogel or Taryn Butler, it's not really going to mean too much if you follow what I'm saying. So, um, I can pull these glasses down so I can see. This is a combat variation right here. And with the combat you have, and you can see the safety right there that uh, abutting the frame. I hope you can see that at least. 
that's a major uh, thing that we did. That's full flush onto the frame. I don't care how you drop this thing. This is your first safety. If this goes, usually the rest of them go. You can see the purchase on the frame with that safety. It is incredible. And we designed it that way. So, you know, there's, it's just, you're not gonna negate the first safety unless you decide to. And also with that, because of the angling, we've made it so just a, just a little bit of pressure, just your pressure is going to clear it without it clicking and also without it dragging when it comes back out. I'm gonna cover my mug up here so you can see. So with this trigger, actually I'm gonna move a little bit to the side now so I can run you through these guns. So there's your wall, take up wall, take up wall. From there, it's a short break with a short reset. Now remember, this is an incredibly short reset for a carry weapon, the way it's dropped in here. It's pulling at three, a little bit over three pounds. I could do the pull test for you, but the video is gonna to get too long for that. Here is a Gen 3. Same thing, the pre-travel is gonna be about the same on all these, okay? So there's your pre-travel, only fact doesn't factor in that much, guys. I mean, everyone wants to pull this pre-travel out, but that's, that's negligible right there. And from here is your break. Very short, aggressive, clicky, crisp. Once again, this is a Gen 3. Look how short with a 5.5 connector, if you understand the geometry, how this trigger reacts. There's another Gen 5. Same thing, same amount, of, just about the same amount of take up a little bit here. Guys, we're not going to argue over a 30 second or, you know, of pre-travel. That's ridiculous. So you're there, wall, snap. You can see these are breaking very quickly. And this one, I think this one has a, yeah, it has a little bit longer of a reset. But same thing, we're splitting hairs here. In case, like I said, if in a situation of a threat or when you're on the line, practicing, you know, training, it's not a huge deal. Okay, um, that is the co those are the combat models. We're gonna move on to the competition models. Okay, three guns right here, and this is gonna shut off in three minutes because I'm reaching twenty minutes. I only wanted this to make this a couple minutes, but you know how it goes. So with this gun, same thing. A little bit of pre-travel there. Gen 5s uh, particularly have a lot of a lot of pre-travel going on before you hit the wall. But as you can see, the break, short, and then look at the reset on this. Let me get it up here. This is a competition reset all day. Like I, I'm trying to pull my finger away from it as fast as I can at this angle. It's kind of hard, but you can see that's a very fast trigger. Um, now let's look at it in the let's look at it in the Gen 3 right there. Pre-travel. That had a little bit longer of a break travel, but the reset is up there. Same reset. All right, another Gen 3. I think this one is the one that's, uh, you know, because it dropped into this. Yeah, I see they go reset, break. Reset, break. And same thing here, pre-travel, a little bit of pre-travel. But like I said, the pre-travel is... If you shoot a lot, you get it, okay? It's always the young guys that, or guys that don't shoot a lot say, hey, I want no pre-travel at all. I want a 30-second. They're not, I don't think they're running their gun, sorry. You know, uh, like they sh uh, enough to, to understand it. Like, you're going to prep that out, and it's important to keep the gun safe. So other than having that insane amount of pre-travel taken out, it's better have a safe gun and work with something underneath an eighth of an inch uh, as far as efficiency and safety. You got to look at all those. You got to look at the efficiency versus the safety and all that and make sure that it all, you know, corresponds. So um, I'm at 19 minutes. I'm going to probably have to shoot another one. This one's going to, this one's for YouTube guys. All right. Uh, so Basically, these are on the site right now as uh, in only available in the groups. I'm going to try to figure out a way if you're a previous customer to be able to get them shoe only so they're going to pop right into your system and, and work perfectly. Um, if you want to check them out, it's www.johnnyglocks.com. The YouTube channel is Johnny Glocks the Persona. If you are watching this on YouTube, subscribe, click like, do all that stuff that you're supposed to do as a good YouTube subscriber. 
And uh, look, basically, you guys have a good day. I'm getting down to 10 seconds here. Johnny Glock, I'm out. Take care.